We are in round 4 of the FIDE Grand Prix Chess Tournament 2022 League 3 in Berlin. Today we have a lot of decisive results. Opening Grigory won against Andrei Sipenko. Hikaru Nakamura won against Levon Aronian. So Hikaru took a revenge against Aronian. And now he's back in the competition of the A group. In the B group, Shakir Namidero won against Vincent Kemar. On board 2 of the B group, Lenny Dominguez drew against Danny Lubo. In the C group, Wesley Soap broke against Sam Shanklin. And on board 2, MVL that is Maxim Masher Lagrav and Alexander Predke played against each other. This is the game which we are going to be taking a look at. In, in the D group, Yu Yangi drew against Anishigiri and Aminta Batabai won against Nikita Vitigo. So let's start with the game MVL opened with E4. It was the real pace. Normal development. All opening theory. Here h3 by white to stop bishop g4. Because white wants to play d4, he doesn't want his knight to be pinned. Otherwise, he can lose this pawn. Rook e8, d4, bishop to b7, a3. And this is a very close position. Black tries to break in the center, but white just keeps it closed. And this is a very positional game. Both sides try to maneuver their pieces. And white starts by attacking with f4. Knight g6. And look at the structure by black. He has just closed the king. No one can even attack the king now. A trade of the bishops. Black gets his rook in the game. He looks kind of odd there. White gets his knight back to play knight to d4, bishop to d7. It controls both the squares, but still the white is sitting and controlling a lot of squares here. g5, queen f2, g4, h4, g3. This pawn which was here nicely defending the king, which I had just spoken about earlier, it just moved three steps forward and just sacrificed itself. Here black keeps his rook hanging. His idea is after knight into e5, there is this tricky knight to h5. It's a discord attack and you win the queen. But MVL saw this move. He played rook to f1. After bishop g6, now he takes it. He knows that knight h5 is a discord attack. But here he doesn't give the queen totally free. Yes, he gets the rook, but he also loses the knight. So first he plays knight into g6. And now if you're thinking there's rook into f1. And after rook into f1, you just win the knight again. But here there's a checkmate in one. E5. It discovered check. And it controls the h7 square. The rook controls this file and the pawn guards the square. And what a checkmate it is. You can never imagine such checkmates. But yes, it is a checkmate. So black plays rook to b2. Actually the best move is rook into f1 only. But here you don't take the knight, you play knight to f6 and just try to block the position. But instead you play rook to b2 and now it's better for white. Knight to f8, king g8, knight e6 and now rook into b1. He has to sacrifice it otherwise there was rook f8, king h7 and e5. The discord check and it would end up in a mate. So that's why black has to sacrifice his rook. And now it is winning for white because he has two rooks for a queen. It's not winning in all positions but in this position it is winning because black skin is trapped. So queen e7, king h3. The queen just keeps moving and after rook f3, black resigns because he'll get his other rook in the game. Black cannot do much and he loses this game. We come to the cross table now. In the A group, Oparin Grigori leads with 2.5 points, leaving Levan Aronian and Hikaru Nakamura behind. Uh, in this round, Hikaru Nakamura won against Levan Aronian, but Oparin Grigori also won his match and came on top. In the B group, Shakya Mamedaro and Lenny Dominguez tie on 2.5 points. And in the C and D group, the results are exactly the same. Only the players are different. 
what a coincidence it is so yeah this is the recap if you want to know all the information about the grok teachers tournament you can check this video here and if you want to see the previous recaps you can check this playlist here this is edric vasquez thanks for watching and i'll see you in my next video